So I just got these SBs in the mail from Kicks World and I want to talk about these because I feel like these things are flying under the radar. And if you guys didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA Show. So if you're new to this channel, I love talking about sneakers, styles, cuts, materials, history, nostalgia, resale values, how to do it, vlogs, cars, food, sports, you name it, whatever's in my DNA, I love sharing with y'all. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing and let's go ahead and get into this video. So first things first, I'm sure you're wondering, what sneaker are you even talking about because you haven't opened the box yet? So let's go ahead and crack this box open just so we can get an understanding on what the topic is and then we can talk about the shoe. Right here, we have the Chlorophyll Nike SB Dunk Low. And like I said earlier, I picked these up from Kicks World, which we will talk about a little bit later in the video on what they are and what they do. But for now, we need to talk about the history of this shoe. We originally saw the famous tennis player, John McEnroe, wearing the prototype of the Nike Air Trainer 1 back in 1986. This sneaker then became a shoe that was very iconic. This sneaker was well known for training and exercising. The shoe that you saw McEnroe originally wearing was the OG Chlorophyll colorway. This has been a very iconic iconic sneaker model in colorway for over 30 years now. So similar to the Air Max 1 or other iconic original models, this is definitely going to hold a strong name when you put this colorway on another sneaker. And that's what brings us to current time when the Chlorophyll SB Dunk Low released last year. I definitely heard a lot of people talking about it, but at the same time when the shoe came out, it was just kind of under the radar and wasn't going for too much money. And I felt like we didn't see that many sneaker shops even get the shoe. So before we talk about rarity and resale value and what people even think if the shoe is fire or Trash, we got to break down the shoe and talk about the styles, cuts, and materials. So starting with the outsole, you have an all gray Nike SB Dunk outsole with a green chlorophyll Nike SB logo on the center of the foot. Going to the upper, you're going to have a mixture of materials when it comes to the perforated leather, the suede, or the mesh on the inside. Looking at the front end of the shoe, you have a black suede with a perforated toe cap right here in white. And going to the mid panel on the foot, you have a black suede swoosh and a perforated panel as well in white leather. But the perforations are separated a little bit more than you see on the toe, so there's definitely a lot less dots on the side and up around the eyelets and then the back end of the shoe you have a gray suede with a small hit of white leather here on the back end another set of gray suede on the tab and a green nike branding embroidered in there looking at the tongue of the shoe you have a white mesh nike sb tongue with the fat tongue vibes white laces and a green nike sb logo here on the tongue on the inside of the tongue you have a green chlorophyll vibe right here it almost feels like a microfiber towel when it comes to the actual material on the back side of the tongue and then you got your smooth white mesh right here on the inside of the sock liner with your all black nike sb zoom air insole so after looking at this shoe in hand and thinking that the retail on the sneaker was only a hundred dollars and the fact that the materials are so nice on this shoe that immediately is going to make me feel that this shoe is worth way more than the retail value but when we looked at the original resale of the sneaker it was going for a couple bucks you know close to 200 bucks which is double the retail which makes sense but i definitely feel like when we see a shoe like this with a nicer quality it tends to be a little bit more money now this pair is a size nine in particular i ended up renting these from kicks world if you guys don't know what kicks world is it's a monthly subscription sneaker rental service. So basically you could pick a plan determining on how many sneakers you want, depending on the value and all these different things. And then you can rent those shoes and you can actually wear them. You don't have to worry about, oh, if I get the shoe dirty, are they gonna get mad or anything like that? They want you to wear the sneakers like they're yours. Obviously have a little bit of respect for the sneakers saying you don't wanna rip it up or tear it up or anything like that. But at the same time, still wear it. If you get it dirty, they're not gonna be tripping. So basically you can rent all new shoes or you can rent used shoes as well. And you could determine which plan you wanna have. So if you wanna rent only dead stock shoes and be the first one to un-DS everything because you're tripping about somebody else wearing the shoe, even though people People wear shoes at bowling alleys and skating rinks and everything like that and those are rentals and there's been a lot more feet in those whole other thing off topic but anyways if you want to be somebody to undead stock a new pair of shoes or two or three pairs of shoes every single month they have a plan set for you as well on that and another cool thing is we have a special discount for you when you use the discount code dna show so make sure you use that at checkout i'll have a link for you down below in the description and pinned in the comment section i love it i've been getting some cool shoes from there i've been renting some stuff i actually just got another shoe to make a review for y'all and showing y'all a new pickup because I actually purchased something from them as well because you can actually buy the sneakers too which is cool they can sell it to you for the value and they can credit you and everything like that it's pretty dope you should check out the website but anyways back on topic let's talk about what everybody else thinks about it and the resale value and everything like that so when you look at the resale right now for a size 9 they're going for around 250 bucks 
When you look at the resale for a size 13, which is my size, they're going for around 350 bucks. And we all know the struggle. If you have a bigger foot when it comes to Nike SBs, or honestly any other sneakers at this point, if you wear a size 13 or a 12 or a 14 or whatever it may be, if you got a bigger foot, you typically got to pay an extra 100, 200, or 300 bucks. And that's something that definitely really sucks. So if you don't want to end up paying all that crazy resale value and you want to be able to cycle through shoes, that again is another reason why I think it's perfect to have Kicks World because you can also use that in your advantage to be able to go through a bunch of different shoes and not have to worry about paying so much extra money for your size 13 even though it's going for way less for everybody else it's just not fair man size 13 gang drop a comment down below in the comment section so when you look at the graph when it comes to the size 9 pair as you can see right here everything has been fairly the same when it comes to pricing over time and it's been very neutral throughout this entire period but when you go to a size 13 it's a different story you can see here on december 12th a size 13 was going for 207 dollars and then you go to january 18th and now you're talking about 650 dollars for the same shoe but it looks like people are coming to their senses now and the shoe is starting to get down to around 350 bucks and it's making a little bit more sense but still it's a hundred dollars more than a size nine and it's the same exact shoe crazy now i personally think this shoe is extremely fire and the reason why i say it's running under the radar is because i just don't see too many people with the shoe in hand or in their collections i looked up on youtube there weren't even that many reviews of the shoe so i figured hey i want to bring you guys a review i want to see what the shoe looks like in person because i saw some photos online and i hadn't got a chance to see them in hand yet these things look great and this is definitely a shoe i would love to have in my collection if i could have got it for 100 bucks saying that now i'd have to pay 350 so i just went with the rental instead so clearly you can see i like the shoe i think it's fire if i were to vote fire or trash i would definitely pick fire and i wanted to see what you guys think so if you haven't already make sure you follow me on ig so you can participate in the polls i love to post ones on my story get the results and put them here on the channel this is what the people said 75 percent of the people chose fire and 25 percent of the people chose trash so clearly right there it seems like a lot of people do appreciate the shoe but it's just very weird that i don't see it like around that often like typically when you see a shoe drop and you're like okay cool you see everybody kind of getting their pairs over the next couple months you'll see people posting them on ig and everything like that i don't know let me know what you guys think about this shoe is it flying under the radar am i tripping let me know so that's pretty much gonna do it for me if you guys appreciated this review learning a couple things about the history of the shoe and all those different things let me know down below in the comment section what you would like to see next when it comes to nike sbs something i may have not done before and i might be able to rent another pair and get it for you guys to do a video so I appreciate you guys as always. Don't forget to subscribe. We are very close to a million subscribers. All we need is one more to get there. Okay, maybe like 800,000 more, but we're still really close. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm out. Yo, if you enjoyed this video and wanna grow your collection or make extra money on the side, I built a VIP mastermind that will teach you everything that I've learned about growing my sneaker collection over the past 15 years. This will also give you access to the DNA fam in my VIP community where we talk about investing outside of sneakers. And don't worry, if you don't plan on joining the VIP community, it's okay. I also set up a private DNA fam community that gives you access to all the behind the scenes looks from the studio and multiple chances to win free sneakers and gear from weekly and monthly challenges. So all you need to do is click on the link down below in the description or the first link pinned in the comment section. That will get you set up and into the community. I'm excited to see you guys on the inside. What's good, y'all? So if you made it to the end of the video, comment down below what is your favorite Jordan model of all time. For me, it's easily the Jordan 4s.